मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स माय सेल्फ उत्पल जी सुनिया पीजी के इंग्लिश जे एन नौगांव असम टुडे वी डिस्कस द पोएम एन एलिमेंट्री स्कूल क्लासरूम इन असम रिटन बाय इंग्लिश पोएट स्टीफन स्पेंडर अबाउट द पोएट हिज फुल नेम इज सर स्टीफन हेरल स्पेंडर इंग्लिश पोएट नोवेलिस्ट एंड एसेस and in his poems in his works we find the themes of social injustice and class struggle let us see the first stanza far far from dusty waves these children's faces like ruthless weeds that hear torn round their pillow the tall girl with her with her with the weight down head the paper singing boy with red eyes the stunted unlucky air of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled digits his lesson from his desk at the back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young his eyes deep in a dream of squirrel skin in tree room other than this let us see the main points of this first stanza the main points of this stanza the faces of the children are very far from being energetic and lively as they should be they are far far away from being energetic and lively because they belong to the poverty stricken families and they belong to the slum areas gusty means blowing strongly hence strong wind used as a metaphor like ruthless weeds similarly the children are described as like ruthless weeds not attached to any root they don't have any strong root strong base and which means they are like unwanted growth next pallor pallor means the children's pale faces description of the children in the classroom there are a few children in the class and boy has described a few children let us see there is one tall girl and this tall girl head is way down Why this girl girl's head is weighed down? Maybe uh, she is overburdened with her domestic works and domestic responsibilities because she is coming from a uh, overstricken family. Then the paper singing boy. It's a metaphor. Paper singing boy refers to a very lean and thin boy in the classroom. He is very thin like a paper. Maybe due to more nutrition so the poet has used a simile by uh, sorry metaphor by telling that he is a paper simile boy then another metaphor in this line we find that is red's eyes red's eyes refers to the hungry and greedy eyes like a rat so that that boy's eyes are like uh, hungry like red's eyes and here poverty exposed there a boy with a deformed body the stunted unlucky air of twisted bones there is a boy his body is stunted stopping growth deformed and he has inherited this disease from his father that is why he is called an unlucky air of twisted bones he has inherited this disease from his father he is called unlucky air as he is, he has he inherited this deformed body from his father a sweet and young but unnoticed boy at the back of back of the class so at the back of the dim classroom uh, we find one sweet and young boy and usually he is unnoticed his eyes are bright with a dream of playing outside as a squirrel plays in the trees so that means he doesn't want to confine himself inside the classroom windows inside the classroom he wants wants to go outside and play outside like a squirrel play in the branches of the trees so he wants to be free so let us go to the next slide second stanza on sore cream walls donations shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities bell flower in tyrolis valley open handed map awarding the world its world and yet for these children these windows not this map their world 
where all their futures painted with a fog, a narrow street ceiling with a lit sky, far, far from rivers, caves, and stars of words. Students, sore cream walls, that means sore cream walls, the dirty yellow classroom walls, and not newly painted or not freshly painted. Because the school is, the elementary school is uh, located in a slum area and the condition of the school is and condition of the classroom walls are not good. It's dirty, yellow, faded. Donations refers to the posters on the wall. There are some posters, there are some pictures on the wall and most probably they are donated by some people. Now what are the posters or what are the pictures on the wall? Number one, there is a picture of Shakespeare. Signifies education, culture and world of literature. Shakespeare, we know, he is the greatest dramatist of the, one of the greatest dramatists of the world. And uh, he, uh, his picture in this poem signifies education, culture and world of literature. And definitely these things, culture, education, literature, these things don't have any kind of relations to the slum children. Next, what picture of Tyrone is valley, a beautiful valley full of church bells and beautiful flowers. This symbolizes beauty of nature, so that's a beautiful landscape. Next, there is a world map on the wall, and it's a metaphor for something which is sharing its knowledge with the world. That means the world map is sharing something to the slum children, they're sharing their knowledge. Uh, knowledge of the world, rich and uh, civilized world, the slums. And definitely here the poet uh, refers to two worlds. Uh, one world is the world of the rich and civilized society, and another world is the world of the poverty stricken slum children. But for the slum children, these pictures, map, etc., are meaningless because by confining to the slum areas, and their future is dark and uncertain. And I have told you that this, all these pictures, the picture of Shakespeare, Tyrolis Valley, or Waldman, these pictures, these donations don't have to do anything, uh, don't have to do anything with the uh, slum children. Because Shakespeare's literature, the beautiful valley, and, uh, and Waldman, all these things are very far away from the dark, gloomy, uh, slum, slum, slum area. They are trapped uh, in a narrow place, far away from nature's beauty and the light of knowledge for education. And this is the reason this, that uh, these pictures, donations are uh, of no use, of no meaning to the slum children. Let's go to the next slide. Third stanza, theory, Shakespeare is wicked, the map a bad example, with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. For lives that slightly turn in their cramped holes from fog to a night, on their slack heap, these children wear skins peeped through by bones and spectacles of steel with bended glass like bottled beads on stones. All of their time and space are foggy slum. So block their maps with slums as big as two. Students, let us see the main points uh, mentioned in this stanza. Shakespeare is wicked and made a bad example for them. Yes, Shakespeare is a, a great writer. He's a man of literature, culture, and these slum children have nothing to do uh, with Shakespeare's. Uh, personality and Shakespeare's wisdom. So Shakespeare is described as wicked in this poem. And the map a bad example. The map shown in the world map. That world is uh, a world of the civilized people, rich people. And that world is out of reach of these slum children. And these slum children live in a totally different world. That is why map is a bad example. Ships and sun, ships, sun and love signifies civilized world tempting them to steal. And sometimes some slum children they are tempted to steal from others 
uh, because they are tempted by the uh, riches of the uh, civilized society. Their lives go on silently in their small apartments. Slum children, they live in narrow, uh, in their narrow homes, small homes, very small homes. Okay, their huts and their lives in those uh, small apartments go on very silently. We don't know about their uh, lives, how it is going on at, the, at this moment. Endless night means their unending struggle for existence. That means fog to endless night. So endless night means a limitless, unending struggle for existence. They struggle day and night for their existence. Skins peep through my walls. This means they, have, they are so skinny, so clean and thin due to malnutrition that their bones can be seen through. They suffer from malnutrition, they don't have their uh, regular meals and they are very poor people and that is why uh, they, they are, their physique is very uh, what was a skinny and even one can see their bones through their skins. Then they put on spectacles of steel. They wear very low quality and uncomfortable spectacles because they don't have money to purchase uh, the good quality spectacles. So sometimes they put on such uh, cheap, uncomfortable, uh, heavy uh, spectacles of steel. The lenses of their specs or spectacles are broken or cracked. And even some lenses of their spectacles are broken or cracked and therefore these lenses are also repaired, mended. Mended means repaired. Like bottles, bottle beads on stones. And their lenses are compared to the bottle beads on stones. A bottle beat on stones and having some cracks. So their lenses are like this. And this is a simile, but like bottle beads on stone, you know that whenever there is a comparison using like or as, then that is a simile. And again, here you can find another uh, figures of speech or poetic device that is alliteration, bottle beats. What is alliteration? Alliteration is the repetition of the same sounds. So here bottle beats, so it is, uh, it is an alliteration also. All of their time and space are for this land. So that means uh, their life is dark and hopeless and limited to the slum area only. Their life begins in the slum and their life ends in the slum. So blot their maps with slum. The poet says, the poet wants to say that the government should know that such slums are also in their map. Four stanza. Unless governor, inspector, visitor, this map becomes their window and these windows that shut upon their lives like catacombs break or break open till they break the town and so the children to green fields and make their world run as your own good sense and let their tongues run naked into books the white and green leaves open history theirs whose language is the sun. So, Again, let us see the main points of these lines. The point appeals to the government officials to visit such slum areas and bring those slum children out into the open. The life of the slum children is shut within the dark and gloomy slums. They are sucked, they are trapped in the slum areas and poet appeals to the government officials, to the inspectors, to the visitors, to the educated people that would go to the slum areas and bring them out into the open, okay, and breaking their sub doors. Like catacombs, there is a reference to catacombs, it's a simile again. Catacombs means underground ground cemeteries. So their slum dwellings are like uh, underground cemeteries underground cemeteries, underground graves. So poet has a appeal, has an appeal to bring those children back to the uh, open areas and give them education. 
He appears to break open their sandals and to bring them to the green fields and under the blue sky. He appears the educated public to provide the children the opportunities for education. According to the poet, those people can make history who are powerful with knowledge. Whose language is the sun? Sun stands for light, brightness, power, and energy. Thus, if the children will be educated, they can show their brightness and can make a history. So, in the last day, the poem appeals to all the government officials, all the concerned educated people, officers, to go to the slum areas and bring those poverty stricken slum children uh, to the open places and provide them education. He requests, he asks all of us or all the government people to bring those uh, children to the green fields, to the sea beach or to the different educational institution and provide them education. And finally he says that those people can make history who uh, have the proper knowledge. Knowledge is power. So when they will, they will be educated, they will be full of knowledge and when they will be full of knowledge, they will be powerful and when they will be powerful, they can make history. Thank you.